Hello, everybody, and welcome to my Survivor tier list for the Artifacts 2.0 update. Two things before we begin. First, if you're looking for a detailed explanation or ranking of each survivor's abilities, then check out my best loadouts video. I will not be covering their skills in depth here. Second, remember that every survivor is viable. If one survivor pops out as fun or interesting to you, then by all means, play that survivor. Don't let the rank I give them here dissuade you from playing whoever you want, as all survivors can get good runs. The rankings on this list are given based off of a survivor's consistency or their likelihood of getting a solid run. Also, now that we have artifacts in the game, I need to mention that this list is for normal runs with no artifacts enabled, because some of them change the game in a big way. The ranks will be separated into three main categories, low, mid, and high tier. In between those ranks are low, mid, and mid high tiers, simply because some survivors stand out more or less from the other survivors in the same rank. So starting here in low tier, we have the lonely multi. Yep, he's all alone down here in the bottom tier because, simply put, he just doesn't do anything special in his current state. He does live up to his namesake, bringing multiple tools for the job. The problem is, none of those tools are very good at the job. They get it done, sure, but that's about it. Nothing about his current kit makes you go, yeah, this guy is awesome. Again, I'm not saying you can't get good runs on multi, just that if you're getting some above average RNG and feeling pretty good about your multi run, ask yourself this, would I be doing better if I was on a different survivor? The answer in his current state is almost always yes. His two best abilities, the nail gun and the saw, are simply outclassed by other survivors' abilities. If you want to use the nail gun and attack like a maniac, then play Commando as his primary attack will outscale the nail gun, and on top of that, Commando has some nice mobility and burst damage abilities to boot. If you pick the saw blade and you want to plow through droves of enemies, then mercenary or loader are absolutely better choices for a melee playstyle. Multi has zero benefit of being in melee range, aside from having the highest HP in the game, so once you get past the first loop, things like Imp Overlords, Parents, Elder Lemurians, and and more will just wreck you inside of melee distance. Moving up into low mid tier is the commando. He's the most basic survivor in the game. All you have to do is point and shoot. The only area he really excels in is sustained damage. At any given point, you will be hitting a target. That being said, commando is only okay in all other regards. His mobility, burst damage, and especially AOE capabilities are all outclassed by the other survivors. Still, if you enjoy cathartic gameplay of snapping your aim back and forth on targets and occasionally pressing another button, commando Commando is your guy. Pushing now into the middle tier of survivors, we have Acrid and Artificer. Both of them have a strong early game and need little to no items to get past the first loop. However, due to their lack of consistent procs, their scalability with massive proc chains is not nearly as high as with the other survivors. Artificer has a charge-based primary attack and the rest of her abilities have cooldowns, so the majority of the time you'll be dumping all of your abilities and waiting for them to come back up to dump again. Yes, this lack of consistent DPS is offset by the high damage percentages on her abilities, but if you don't get the right items to scale those values, the lack of consistent damage is very noticeable. Of course, you can make the argument of if you don't get the right items, you'll be weak on anybody, but the point is that it's exacerbated when you feel like you're tossing out a wet noodle every few seconds when you're supposed to be throwing out plasma bombs and shooting a flamethrower from your hands. Not to mention, the Artificer has no real mobility skill, save for if you take the jump over the flamethrower, so you're put in a place of trading damage, lots of damage, for some good mobility, or you are relegated to sprinting in a circle and hoping hoping to not get surrounded. Accurate has a similar issue with the lack of consistent procs, and the reason is due to him being a pseudo ranged survivor, a hybrid between range and melee. He did get the ravenous bite ability with this update, which enables a true melee playstyle, but losing the range of the projectile secondary just feels awful. He has two ways to apply his passive at a distance, his secondary and his special. By losing the range secondary and taking the bite, you aren't just losing half of this range capability, but actually over 80% due to the difference in cooldown. 2 seconds on the secondary versus 10 on the special. Not to mention, the secondary also deals much higher damage on the actual hit. So, if you want to go melee accurate, you are trading a huge portion of a consistency for potentially more overall damage. And I say potentially because, as with Sawblade Multi, accurate has no defensive tools or any really reason at all to be in melee range. Think about how much damage you'll be able to pump out against 4 Blazing Elites or a pack of Elder Lemurians while solely in melee distance. Yeah, you'll have to retreat out of there pretty quickly. We are now heading into the first echelon of high tier, the mid-high rank. Here, I'm putting Huntress, Engineer, and Loader. I'll begin with the Loader because I know she's heralded by a lot of people as one of, if not the most consistent survivor. Early on, I absolutely agree with this sentiment. She has the best early game out of the entire cast, both in terms of damage and mobility, period. However, regardless of if you take her default or alternate punch, her gameplay slowly stagnates and eventually reaches a stopping point where if you don't get a crit or proc a couple items on the punch, you are stuck 
waiting for it to come off a cooldown and doing literally nothing but running around while waiting. Her R only tickles enemies past the first loop and like Acrid, she's a pseudo range survivor in that you won't be sticking an actual melee distance of the enemies very much despite her kit being melee oriented. Loader lacks that consistency of proccing things once you reach the mid to late game and proccing things is what your entire gameplay loop revolves around. If you don't get those procs, you don't do damage. It's as simple as that. Engineer is still, well, the engineer. Having two clones of yourself that you can plop down at any time is and always has been pretty dang powerful. However, even with the addition of the harpoons, I feel his kit is a little too dependent on the turrets, which is why I'm placing him here in mid to high tier. If you can't keep your turrets alive, either from a lack of good defensive items or by placing them in a poor location and watching them instantly die, the engineer doesn't have much else going on for him. Finally, the huntress. If you remember the previous tier list, she was literally the bottom survivor. Now she's all the way up here in the second to highest tier. And whoo baby does she deserve the spot. First, she received a new primary attack, which scales very well the later the run goes. Second, her default primary received some pretty huge buffs. And third, and most importantly, both of her specials got a whopping five seconds shaved off of their cooldowns. Huntress already had amazing mobility and consistent damage output. She really only struggled with single target and burst damage. Now, if you take Flurry and Ballista, both of those areas are covered. She still struggles with staying alive by, you know, having the least amount of HP in the entire game by a significant margin, but man did her consistency jump up a few notches in this patch. Seriously, if you have not tried her out with these buffs and the new primary, you need to. We arrive now to our final destination of high tier. If you've been paying attention, you know we only have two survivors left. The top two survivors on the Artifacts 2.0 patch are Mercenary and Rex. Speaking of the previous tier list, Rex was on top all by himself. Here, now in the Artifacts 2.0 update, he's joined by the Mercenary. But it's not that Mercenary got any better, it's that Rex himself actually got bumped down a peg. His alternate utility, the biggest culprit for his meteoric rise as the most consistent survivor on the last patch, was nerfed to now have a five second cooldown up from two seconds. Rex is still very powerful, especially early on, but now he just doesn't have nearly as broken sustain as he had before. You have to manage your HP more carefully as the run progresses rather than just spamming your shift off of cooldown to heal back to full HP instantly every two seconds. That was a little busted. Mercenary is still the same, a true melee survivor who performs very consistently inside of that melee range due to his kit actually supporting that playstyle in every way. If you have not given him a shot due to running into a pack of blazing elites the first time you played him, then consider giving him another chance. He's super fun to play, and once you learn the ins and outs of his kit, he also performs very well. All right, and that does it for the survivor tier list for the Artifacts 2.0 update. Remember, these are my opinions, and you can and should play whoever you want. They are all viable choices. That being said, I know you guys are bound to have some different thoughts, so let me know how you feel with a like or dislike on the video and also a comment below. You can check out my stream at twitch.tv slash gaming and consider joining our Discord server as well. Thank you for watching and hey, uh, anyone want a video showcasing the best builds on your survivor with command artifact? Cool. Sounds like a plan.